Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering um, my Theory of Python video series. And this In this video I wanted to talk about what, what it is that programmers do. And I wanted to start here because I think there's a lot of people that have questions about whether they should be a programmer or what they should do to prepare for a career in programming. Um, what, what kind of things they're going to need to learn and do. And this, this video, the style that I'm writing this video is more for my kids. My kids They've seen me go to work. They've seen me, you know, sit in front of a computer for hours on end. Uh, I don't think they have a really clear idea of what exactly it is that I do. Okay, so what does it mean to be a programmer? First of all, the the first thing to recognize is that there's software everywhere. Somebody had to write that software, and then somebody has to fix that software when it breaks, and then people want to change the software, so somebody has to do that. It used to be that all of these things that software engineers do used to be handled by mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, electronic engineers. Um, we used to have watches that had like, you know, gears and pulleys and valves and all that kind of stuff. But now it's all handled by CPUs and it's all handled by programmers. So generally the hardware people nowadays, they build computers and they build interfaces to those computers and the software people come in and they write the software to actually power the devices. Uh, it's no longer, we don't live in a world anymore where you design and make things operate based on mechanical or electrical principles. It's, it's very much most of the work in getting things to do something fancy is going to happen in the software layer. So software is everywhere. Okay, so what do developers do? So basically we go in and we gonna, we're going to fix some bugs, right? Something's not working. Why? Go figure it out and fix it. And we, we're, I'm going to build a whole series of videos on how to handle bugs because this, you know, most of what I did all day long was dealing with bugs. Um, the other thing they're going to ask you to do is add some features. And this could be some, something simple like we want to change it from red to blue to we want to add a new button that has an entirely new behavior. And uh, people that aren't very familiar with software have a hard time figuring out like first of all what features are easy to do what features are difficult to do and so it's your job to to help these feature you know choosing which features to pursue as well as driving the features to feature completion that's really what you're doing as a programmer is you're helping advise people for this and you're you're helping to drive it to completion and then sometimes you get to write new software every once in a while and that's an exciting experience when you get to decide how to structure the project right this time because of you've seen it done wrong a thousand times, you've done it wrong a thousand times yourself and you want to do it right for the first time. Okay, so where do I spend my time? Let's talk about time. So as a senior engineer, uh, most of my time is spent uh, talking. I don't really get a chance to write a lot of code. Uh, it hasn't, it's been several years since I've been able to sit down and just write code for days on end. Um, typically, if, if I do start to write a lot of code, people get confused and upset. Um, so we talk, and I'm, what I'm doing when I'm talking is I'm getting feedback from people. I'm helping them understand what the software is doing. I'm helping them make plans for the next iteration of the software and stuff like that. So really, the higher up you go, the more you're really managing people than you are managing computers. The other thing that we spend a lot of our time doing is uh, we call it design. Okay, and what design is, is you have an idea of something you want to do and rather than just going to do it, you figure out the best way to do it. And there's, I should build a whole video series on just the design challenge, like how do you design software? And um, there's um, a lot of little details to talk about that. So I. I kind of want to put that, that idea off to the side that there is this process where we go through and we figure out what to do, how to develop the software and make plans. And we also budget out time for it, right? Um, the other thing we do is we spend a lot of time dealing with bugs. Okay, and again, I'm going to build a video about bugs, but you know, uh, somebody says something's not working, a uh, report ends up on my desk, and then I have to figure out what to do with that. And uh, sometimes most of the bugs that I find, I find on my own. So that's a process we call testing, right? I'll write that down as testing. When you're testing software, you're looking for bugs. You're trying to um, prove to yourself at least, or sometimes prove to other people that there are no significant bugs, or if there are bugs, they're not gonna ruin the behavior of the software. 
So we spend a lot of times finding bugs. Um, the nice thing about bugs is when you find a bug, um, you need to be scientific about trying to figure out why it's broken, right? And each bug carries with it a tiny project, at least. You can also have big projects to go along with bugs, but typically, at least it's a small project. Um, at worst, you're talking like, you know, three months or a year to fix this bug. So they can be quite serious. My laptop, my little tablet here keeps restarting. I don't know why that is. That's a bug. Um, then we have new features, right? So a lot of time I spend um, is also spent uh, developing new features, uh, deciding which features should go in next, um, making estimates on how long it would take to deliver a feature, and then actually delivering a feature, making driving the feature all the way to the delivery process. And uh, there's a couple other things that kind of don't belong in the software problem but are related. One is the problem of management, right? And I, I joke, but it's true, one of your jobs as a developer is you have to manage your managers, right? Um, and the way I explain that is I say you have to make them look good. You have to make them make good decisions. You have to make them say smart stuff, right? So somebody's going to call them into a room and say, why isn't the software doing X? And they have to give an answer that's not only correct, but will communicate the right information to the people around them. So that's a very difficult challenge to do is managing managers. Um, I'll have a couple of videos, I think, about that, about talking. Maybe I'll bring in a couple of managers from my past and interview them and um, you know, have them talk about um, what it's like to manage a software project versus being a developer. Then the other thing that we do, oh, we have to manage also uh, team members. So we have, um, I'll call them golden geese, right? The care and management of fellow developers. How do you get other people to develop their skills and how do you get them to enjoy working with you and enjoy working on the software that you're working on? Um, because uh, if, if there's one thing you're familiar with uh, in this industry is you can get quite a, people will pay you quite a bit of money, but if you're just running off from job to job, you're not really developing software. You're just, you know, we don't want to, and also we don't want to burn people out. That's something that um, I'd have to keep an eye on as my coworkers is they start to get burned down. I say like, we gotta, we gotta figure something out here so you don't, you don't get too tired and you, you want to keep making money. You want to keep uh, working and developing the project so that you can make money. And that's something else that we might, I might spend some time talking about is what it means, how you make money, how you negotiate, um, what are some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout my career, um, what do stocks mean? This is a question I can't believe how many developers I've talked to that had no idea what stocks mean. Um, there's the RSUs, there's options and things like this. I am not a financial advisor. Uh, when you hit a certain salary range, I'd say if you're making 60000 a year, you should be talking to a financial advisor. You should be making plans for the future. So I am not a financial advisor. I'm not going to be able to make good decisions there. But I can explain to people like why, why it is that startups don't want to give you any cash, um, how maybe just the, the business of business as well. You know, some of the time is spent actually, you know, thinking about how am I getting paid, making sure that I get paid uh, a decent salary, and also um, the business. When you're working for a company in a critical role like a software developer, you, you really have to be a part of the business team in terms of understanding what it is the company's doing, where their priorities are, what the customers actually want, how they actually make money, so that you can make good decisions when you work on that software. So this is kind of an overview of what I do with my time. Um, on the job. And I, I do, you know, I, I took, um, I do spend quite a time, quite a bit of time thinking about the business and how they make money. Um, of course, I'm always, you know, worried about making sure that I'm making money. Um, I have to keep my eyes open because if you pass up opportunities and you're making a low salary, which I did for several years, you have to have something to make up for that. And the stocks have understanding that. So all of these things are a lot of what software developers do. And, and as you get higher up in your seniority, and your experience, you're going to be doing less coding and more talking, more working with other people, which, um, you know, a guy like myself, I would not have mind at all if I can just code in a box away from everybody else. <laughs> but that, that doesn't work, obviously, for obvious reasons. Anyway, guys, this is kind of an overview of what programmers do. So this is kind of the job description. This is everything we spend our time on. Some of these things don't change. Any job you have, you're going to manage your managers, you're going to worry about your coworkers, 
you're going to worry about making money and understanding the business stuff like that. And these these activities are activities that are typically associated with software development. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions, if you want me to talk more about this, or if if you want more information, um, I'm more than happy to provide it. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll answer your comments. Maybe make more videos to explain things. Hey, guys, take care. Have a great time. Bye bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.